watching This Is Now, we begin with breaking news of a crash near Honolulu Harbor that injured at least a dozen people. Officials say a shuttle bus apparently drove into a group of pedestrians near the pier. Now, this happened at around 1030 a.m. EMS says a 68-year-old woman suffered critical injuries while two men and two women in their late 50s and 60s are in serious condition. A man in his 70s was taken to the hospital in stable condition. Now, six other adults at the scene were treated but declined transport to the hospital. We spoke to a witness at the scene. Here's what he had to say. I saw the black van come in. I thought it was our van for our tour. I got up and got off the bench. As I looked back, the, the van, another van, was rolling towards the concrete barrier. Driver jumped back in, and I think he hit the gas rather than the brick and went through the barrier and pinned a couple people against the wall. Now, the cause of the crash is unknown. This is a developing story. We'll bring you any updates as we get them on air and online. Torrential rain slams into Kauai, prompting rescues and closing schools. Check out this video from the Garden Isle. We also have this drone video of the Wailua Bridge. A crane apparently fell onto the bridge, forcing authorities to shut down the southbound lanes of Kuhio Highway. There are a number of closures to tell you about on Kauai. We'll have more on those updates in just a few minutes. But first, we want to get the latest on the forecast with meteorologist Drew Davis. Now, Drew, H&N called a first alert weather day for yesterday as well as today. So what can we expect now? Yeah, it was a very active evening of weather. We're on the downtrend, however, throughout the rest of this evening and afternoon, but we can't rule out a couple more downpours throughout the rest of this afternoon and evening. And we're expecting another round of rainfall by the time we get to this upcoming Sunday and Monday. We've declared Sunday and Monday as first alert weather days as well. So taking a look at our graphics right here, you can see that we are expecting a first alert weather day on Friday and Sunday. And the main thing right here, our first alert radar and satellite, we are seeing some active weather just to the south of Kauai and south of Oahu. You can see some lightning on our first alert radar and satellite. So we still have some active cells out there, but they are over open water. So let's go island by island to see what we're tracking. Earlier today, we had a flash flood warning up for Kauai. That has been canceled by the National Weather Service. We're quiet over the Garden Isle right now. Again, we're on the downtrend, taking a look over at the gathering place, seeing some light showers in town. And again, we're tracking and watching very closely to see if these cells to our southwest will move over Oahu throughout the rest of this afternoon and evening. Some lighter rainfall over parts of Molokai in the western parts of Maui and some rainfall over near the Big Island as well. The heaviest rainfall seems to be over near Hilo over the last hour. We're tracking Maui County and the island of Hawaii very closely to see if these southern cells off to the southwest of Oahu and Kauai continue moving further to the east. We still have a flood watch up for the island of Kauai through this evening. Again, the flash flood warning has been canceled throughout this evening as well. And last night we had a severe thunderstorm watch. These are rare in the islands. We didn't have any actual severe thunderstorm warnings move over land. However, there were some cells that were considered severe thunderstorm criteria over open water last night. Taking a look at some of the rain totals that we have from last night, the National Weather Service put these numbers out this morning. Between 6 p.m. Thursday to 6 a.m. Friday, we saw rainfall rates of one to four inches of rain per hour. Lihue Airport, nearly 12 inches of rain within that time period. Poipu, 10.59 inches of rainfall. Kalaheo, 12.5. Wailua, around 11.26. So a lot of rain came down in that 12 hour period and we're not out of the woods just yet. The rain, the rain is expected to continue, although lighter throughout today and another round of heavy rainfall is expected throughout this upcoming Sunday. Taking a quick look at our first alert future cast really quickly going forward so throughout the rest of this afternoon and evening where we're seeing those active cells. We're going to see these cells back off and move a little bit further northwest, still tracking active weather off to the southwest of Kauai, but this band of moisture is going to hang up near Kauai throughout Saturday. Could see some more rainfall there. A little bit drier of a Saturday throughout the rest of the state. And by the time we get to this upcoming Sunday, we're going to see that band of moisture build back up and start to move 
to the southeast. So we have declared a first alert weather day for Oahu and Kauai going forward throughout Sunday. You can see this band of moisture, heavy rainfall. The ground is already saturated over near Kauai, so a flooding alert or there's still the flooding threat going forward. And this band moves throughout Monday and uh, down the rest of the island chain. A quick look at our first alert seven day forecast. Today is still a first alert weather day. Tomorrow, a little bit drier, not ruling out a couple of showers, mostly for the Garden Isle. Sunday, heavy rainfall for Kauai and Oahu. Monday, you'll see the rest of that moisture moving down the rest of the island chain. So towards Maui County. And the Big Island, again, Sunday is another first alert weather day. We've got to watch this very closely because of the flooding threat. The ground is already very saturated over the Garden Isle, so we could see more flooding coming up this Sunday. Drew, do we expect this next round of rain to be as heavy? Those were some really impressive rain totals for Kauai. Do we expect this next round to be as bad? So the models right now are showing it to be a little bit less, but because of how saturated the ground is, especially over Kauai, we could see the flooding threat be the main concern here. Um, there's going to be less instability in the atmosphere because a lot of it was used up with this um, this last evening's thunderstorms. Um, but still, we can't rule out thunderstorms because of the southeasterly wind pattern we have. A lot of the instability is getting reintroduced into the atmosphere um, throughout Saturday. But right now, we're expecting a little bit less rainfall, but the threat for flooding is still there. Absolutely. So take this time, this break, as you, if you will, in the weather to uh, prepare your properties uh, and get ready for this next round of rain. All right, meteorologist Drew Davis, thank you so much for keeping us posted. Absolutely. All right, and H&N has been receiving photos and video that show damage on Kuhio Highway after a construction crane fell onto Wailua Bridge. The southbound lanes have been shut down and at last check, the county said there was no contraflow. Now this is a significant traffic artery for the Garden Isle. It's not known e right now how long the damage would take to fix and when the roadway will reopen. Meanwhile, the heavy rains have also led to mudslides and fallen trees blocking multiple roadways. Officials said a landslide has blocked Cooley Road and a mudslide closed Akemema Street. Uh, crews are also clearing debris on Komuli Highway. Pualoke Street near Haleko Road is also closed due to a sinkhole and down power lines. We have all the latest road closures on our website, hawaiinewsnow.com. The DOE canceled classes at all Kauai public schools today due to safety concerns, and there are two emergency shelters open right now, one at the Koloa Neighborhood Center on Veli Veli Road and another at the Kapa'a Neighborhood Center on Co Street. Now, the flash flooding left people trapped in their homes and their cars, and rescues were reported in Koloa and Wailua. This is video from the Koloa Texaco station, which is closed at this time. The brown water flooded the store and the gas station, leaving a muddy mess. Residents we spoke to on the south side said the water rose so fast. The Kauai Emergency Management Agency says wastewater treatment plants at Waimea and Wailua were also overwhelmed and spills have been reported. Crews are working to solve the problem. Now, Kauai Mayor Derek Kawakami is currently traveling off island, but he gave an update this morning on sunrise. And the sheer volume and magnitude of this event um, really created some flooding issues island wide, so it's not localized in any one general area as we've seen in the past but island-wide um, we've got numerous reports of property damage some infrastructure damage and of course um, our folks have been monitoring overnight but as daylight has uh, come about our teams are out there canvassing to do a real accurate damage assessment to see uh, what we're dealing with out there now, as a flash flood warning remains up for Kauai, the county's acting mayor, Reiko Matsuyama, signed an emergency proclamation to speed up their severe weather response. The proclamation helps provide relief for damages and losses as severe weather rolls through the island. So residents are advised to document and take photos of damages to their property. We're going to have much more on the severe weather coverage coming up on air and online. Now to other news, Iran has vowed to revenge for a strike on its consulate in Syria, which it says was carried out by Israel with permission from the U.S. The revenge could come now at any moment. Erica Brown has details from Washington, D.C.
Israelis are bracing for an attack from Iran, which U.S. officials tell CBS News is imminent. I think this is a very dangerous time, not only for the region, but for the world. A U.S. official tells CBS News Iran's Revolutionary Guard has completed preparations of drones and missiles to launch into Israel. And more than 150 cruise missiles are ready to go. And that number has gone up in the past couple of days to make sure some get through Israeli defenses. The impending attack is in retaliation for a deadly airstrike on the Iranian consulate in Syria that Iran blames on Israel. Tensions are at extreme high right now. The the move to strike the embassy annex of the Iranians was an extremely provocative move. Iran also blames America for the attack on the consulate, something the U.S. denies. But President Biden has made clear the U.S. stands ready to support Israel if they're attacked. We are devoted to the defense of Israel. We will support Israel, we will defend, help defend Israel, and Iran will not succeed. Sources tell CBS News Iran has also increased shipments of weapons to proxies throughout the region, putting a potential target on U.S. forces. A strike on American soldiers would force the U.S. to respond. I am really concerned about that, that small skirmishes here and there could uh, lead to uh, to an open war. Attacks on U.S. forces in the Middle East have been on the rise since the Israel-Hamas war began in October. Erica Brown, CBS News, Washington. The Biden administration is canceling more student debt. The White House announced Friday that President Biden is canceling $7.4 billion in student loans for 277,000 borrowers. The White House said the latest round of relief helps those enrolled in the saving on a valuable education repayment plan, as well as those in income-driven repayment or public service loan forgiveness plans. With its latest move, the administration has now canceled $153 billion in debt for 4.3 million Americans. Earlier this week, Biden announced revised plans to cancel student debt that, when implemented, would provide relief to more than 30 million Americans. Lawyers for two co-defendants of former President Donald Trump in the classified documents case were in a federal courtroom today asking the judge to dismiss the obstruction of investigation charges against them. Ken Delanian is in Florida. Vice President Kamala Harris in Arizona today, the new front line in the nation's battle over reproductive rights. The Arizona Supreme Court this week ruled to reinstate an 1864 ban on all abortions, except to save the mother's life. The Biden campaign releasing a series of ads blaming former President Trump for seating the conservative U.S. Supreme Court that overturned Roe v. Wade. If Donald Trump gets back in power, what freedom will you lose next? The campaign previewing that Vice President Harris will say, quote, Donald Trump is the architect of this health care crisis, and that's not a fact he hides. In fact, he brags about it. Mr. Trump saying the Arizona decision went too far, calling it an inappropriate law. Did Arizona go too far? Yeah, they did, and that'll be straightened out. He urged Arizona lawmakers to act immediately to remedy what has happened. Though earlier this week, he said abortion should be left up to the states. He acknowledged Democrats' political advantage on abortion. The only issue they think they have is on abortion. Polls show former President Trump leading President Biden on the key issues of immigration and the economy. Today, Mr. Trump focused on election integrity, even as he faces charges of trying to illegally overturn the 2020 results. House Speaker Mike Johnson traveling to Mar-a-Lago to meet with him. We want to make absolutely certain that anybody votes is actually an American citizen. And in some states, it's it's too easy. The speaker moving to align himself more closely with the former president in a bid to appeal to far-right members and hold on to his job. Speaker Johnson's job is in peril after the House today renewed a foreign intelligence surveillance program against the wishes of many far-right Republicans who also oppose funding for Ukraine that Speaker Johnson has said he would bring up for a vote. In Washington, Alice Barr, NBC News. Investigators tapped Hawaii Attorney General Ann Lopez to look into the timeline of the wildfire as well as how government agencies responded.
Over 60 subpoenas have been issued in the probe after delayed responses from county officials. That report is set to be released this coming Wednesday. Meanwhile, the state and the American Red Cross will start cutting back meals they serve to fire survivors living in hotels. Right now, they're serving three meals a day, but starting Monday, the program will transition to one daily meal. Hawaii's Emergency Management Agency says they've served nearly 1.5 million meals since the fires. Haima's administrators said food distribution and availability has returned to the affected areas in Maui County. But survivors we spoke with say food is still needed. That is a really hard thing to take in. I'm, I'm really bummed to hear that. None of our needs have been met. Food is a big part of you know, recovering from trauma and just maintaining a happy, healthy life. And um, so, you know, we're really nervous about this. There's already been an increase in demand from um, the community at the hubs. The American Red Cross said it will ensure their clients have the nutritional needs met and will connect them with resources if needed. The Department of Health says the ocean off Lahaina is safe for recreation and poses no significant risk to human health. UH, the Surfrider Foundation, and the Land Department tested the water and sediment for metals and petroleum and found nothing dangerous to people. There's still no timeline for the dredging that needs to happen for the harbor to reopen. That will depend on funding. Access to certain coastal zones offshore is still restricted. Meanwhile, West Maui boaters will soon be able to use Lahaina Small Boat Harbor for refueling services. Recently, they've been forced to go all the way to Ma'alaya. DLNR says an above ground portion of the fueling system is being rebuilt and is expected to open in mid-May. It'll include new gasoline and diesel dispensers, a propane fueled backup electrical system, and a card reader for making payments. It's all being rebuilt and paid for by the company that operates the fueling station. That's going to be a long time for the docks are done. But what we can do is fuel the boaters on this side so they have to drive the 18 miles with the crew after they let them all the customers off and come back through the wind and the rain and all that money lost. They don't even go out unless they've got a full boat. Work to remove the pilings start next week. Officials say it will likely be years before anyone can reach the harbor by land since it's still in the restricted zone of Lahaina. The state has agreed to pay three people who were victimized by their foster sibling. They were all part of a family with a dark history. Jelani Martinez has the story. Child Welfare Services has strict confidentiality policies, so it's impossible to know what goes on behind these doors. But the state has agreed to settle this lawsuit involving three foster kids who were sexually abused by a foster sibling in a Waimanalo home. This is the same family tied to Ka'anoi Kipapa, who 10 years ago at age 16 stabbed to death his adoptive mother, Jolyn Kipapa. He claimed she abused him for years, and he was sentenced to eight years. Ka'anoi isn't part of this new settlement, but three of his adopted siblings sued the Department of Human Services for placing a new foster child who was a known sex abuser in their household with other young children. Their attorney, Randall Rosenberg, says the state agreed to pay the three siblings $1.8 million. It's hard enough for them to come forward to bring these claims when they've spent their entire lives trying to forget what happened. And then we force them, unfortunately, in this process to relive it all over again. So many times it's, a, it's, it's momentous, it's life changing to get these things resolved. Rosenberg has also been hired by the family of Gianna Bradley, the 10-year-old Wahua girl who died in January of starvation, neglect and pneumonia while in the care of her legal guardians. It's emotional, it's, it's, it's horrible. You think that if we are able to get the public's attention or the state's attention on some of these cases and make it painful for the state to have made these errors by requiring them to pay money and the public embarrassment and everything else that goes on with it, but it doesn't seem to be enough to discourage the behavior from happening in the future. But state leaders have been trying to fix the problems. Children, Representative Lisa Martin, who chairs the House Committee for and Human so Services, are says officials are exploring the legality of requiring more conditions for adoptive parents to get monthly payments from the state, things like providing school and medical records. Martin says the court system already changed some procedures for legal guardians. 
six months after becoming guardians and then annually thereafter, they have to fill out a form that shows the records of all their health care visits, including well child checkup, with uh, permission for their pediatrician to provide information directly to the court, as well as um, information from the school. So there's, for the first time, this is something that legally they always could have done, but they didn't do in the past. The state needs to get together with some of the agencies and some of the experts, and maybe even some of the plaintiff's attorneys who do this kind of work to try and figure out some practical solutions uh, so that we don't hurt these children like they're being hurt currently. Jolani Martinez, Hawaii News Now. And DHS responded to our request for comment, saying it cannot comment on pending litigation. But the department has introduced bills this legislative session to strengthen its programs. In the Mike Miski trial Thursday, an aspiring MMA fighter said he charged the businessman up to $2,500 to beat people up for him. Jacob Smith told the jury he worked for Miski as an enforcer of personal and professional grievances. He said he not only got paid per assault, but that he also helped arrange a failed murder for hire plot against a man named Joe Tavares, who Miski believed was a snitch. He also said Miski seemed to confirm that he ordered the death of Jonathan Frazier, who Miski blamed for his son's death. Smith says he was also involved in the attempted murder of Lindsey Kinney, who escaped and posted this on social media. They will shoot at me and they will miss. Ready, cool, or wrench? I promise, bro, it's going to cost you. It's going to cost you. In return for his testimony, Smith agreed to a plea deal that will reduce his sentence. All right, let's take a live look outside with our cameras around the state. This is Hilo, Hawaii. The temperature there, 74 degrees. A much different story than what's happening on the western part of the state. We're going to have much more news after this quick break. All right, let's see what the internet is talking about. More than half a million Roku accounts have been compromised in a cyber attack. Roku said hackers gain access to user accounts through stolen login credentials, likely from a data breach on a different site, 
and it exploited people who use the same credentials for different accounts. In fewer than 400 cases, the hackers used Roku accounts to make purchases on its streaming services, but did not access sensitive financial information. The company is reversing charges and refunding all affected accounts. User passwords are automatically reset. Roku says it will reach out to users that were affected by the hack. And a robotic dog is undergoing rigorous training in Oregon's Mount Hood for a mission that's out of this world. The robot named Spirit has been testing out its four legs in the rugged terrain about 50 miles east of Portland, learning how to walk on rocky surfaces and soft ground. Now, scientists hope their research will help prepare other robotic dogs for future missions on the moon and other planets in our solar system. The research is part of the LASI project, which stands for Legged Autonomous Surface Science in Analog Environments. The team is comprised of experts from NASA, as well as five universities, including USC, Texas AMN, and Oregon State University. That's going to do it for us today on This Is Now. We're going to have much more severe weather coverage on First at Four, as well as online. Happy Aloha Friday, everyone.